The sentencing just in, the Dallas police officer found guilty of murder of killing an unarmed neighbor in his own apartment. She thought it was her, she says. She faced up to 99 years tonight, sentenced to 10, eligible for parole in five. Outrage outside the court, but then this moment in court, the shooting victim's brother asking to hug the police officer. Also breaking tonight, the deadly plane crash. We have just learned at least seven dead now. Flames and smoke seen for miles at an airport in the Northeast, what the pilot reported just moments after takeoff. President Trump unleashing, tweeting while watching Democrats on live TV today, saying they are ready to subpoena the White House for all it knows about the president's call with the Ukrainian president, the expletive the president used, and what he then said before the cameras. Tonight, Bernie Sanders hospitalized after suffering chest pains, appearing to struggle on stage last night, needing to sit down, and the emergency heart procedure that followed. The record-breaking heat tonight and what's right behind it. Rob Marciano standing by. The new body cam video tonight after that controversial arrest. What you can hear police saying as they lassoed an African-American suspect walking him through a town while they're on horseback. Come on. And your money tonight, ATM fees reaching a record high near the $5 mark now and the simple step you can take right now. This is ABC World News Tonight with David Muir. Good evening, and it's great to have you with us here on a Wednesday night. That emotional moment in court in just a moment here. But first, what we have just learned after a deadly plane crash in the Northeast. At least seven people dead tonight. Smoke and flames could be seen for miles. It was a World War II bomber carrying sightseers and had taken off from the second busiest airport in New England. Tonight, what the pilot said moments after takeoff, right before the plane then slammed into a warehouse. It all happened in Hartford, and ABC's Witt Johnson is on the scene in Connecticut tonight. The deadly crash rocking Bradley International Airport in Hartford just before 10 a.m. B-17 has crashed. Fire is seen. No other information is available. You said a B-17 aircraft has crashed? A vintage World War II era B-17 bomber crashing as it tried to land just after takeoff, slamming into a de-icing warehouse. The plume of black smoke visible for miles. I said, hey, that plane is going... I said, it's not lined up with the runway. I said, it's going to crash. Multiple fatalities and at least six injured taken to local hospitals, including two firefighters and a member of the Connecticut Air National Guard. Of the 13 on the plane, 10 were passengers who uh, paid to take the ride, and there were three um, folks, um, aircraft um, crew. And there was another person on the ground in the warehouse. According to FlightAware, the aircraft departed Bradley International at 9.48 a.m. Eastern, reached an altitude of about 800 feet, but only two minutes later, pilots telling the tower they had a problem. And what's the reason for coming back? We got number four engine. We'd like to return blow it out. I commented to my associate who was waiting with me that the, uh, he had just lost an engine. And then you could hear it sputtering and he wasn't climbing anymore. The bomber, built in 1944, just one of 18 that remain was part of an educational tour across the country, offering flights to civilians. This airplane was not just old, it was ancient. And so it's a real question for the FAA. How old is too old? Whit Johnson with us live tonight from Bradley International Airport. And Whit, as you're learning tonight, there was another incident involving this plane several years ago. David, that's right. In 1987, this same plane overran a runway while trying to land in Beaver Falls, Pennsylvania. Twelve people were on board, three people injured in that incident. As for this crash, the NTSB has a GO team on the ground right now investigating the cause. David. All right, Whit Johnson leading us off tonight. Whit, thank you. And now to the race for 2020 and the alarming scene overnight. Senator Bernie Sanders appearing to have trouble on stage and then the emergency heart procedure right after at a Las Vegas hospital. The presidential candidate appearing subdued at an event in Nevada last night asking for a chair saying it's been a long day. Sanders is 78 and tonight what he's now saying. Here's ABC senior national correspondent Terry Baran. A warning sign. Bernie Sanders at a campaign event in Las Vegas last night apparently feeling worn out and asking an aide for help. Ari, can you be favor? Where's Ari? Give me a chair up here for a moment. Let me sit down here. It's been a long day here. Not long after, the 78-year-old Sanders complained of chest discomfort and went to a hospital. Doctors discovering that one of Sanders' arteries was blocked, and they inserted two stents to unblock it. Sanders has had a history of high cholesterol, but no heart disease in the past. 
He is the oldest candidate in a race where the top three contenders are over 70, and he'd be the oldest president if elected. Sanders recently talking to Dr. Oz about the demands of the campaign. A campaign uh, trail is really not conducive uh, to good health habits, but what I try to do as much as I can is walk. I'm a big walker. And he's a famously hard-running candidate, as he showed against Hillary Clinton in 2016. But I think the secretary is right. And that is that the American people are sick and tired of hearing about your damn emails. Thank you. Me too. Me too. Sanders can typically pack three or four events into a day in multiple cities, not missing a beat when he suffered a gash from a shower door last March. But he took a short break after the last debate. In the United States of America, we are spending twice as much per capita on health care. Tonight, Sanders' Democratic rivals are wishing him a quick recovery. I know everyone here wishes him well, wants to see him strong and back on the trail as soon as possible. So. And late this afternoon, Sanders tweeting his thanks for all the well wishes, adding, I'm feeling good. And always on message, he noted he was lucky to have good health care, adding, Medicare for all. Of course, across the spectrum tonight, everyone polling for Bernie Sanders. And Terry, what do we know next uh, for Senator Sanders? Any next steps have they revealed? Well, David, you can tell from that tweet, his spirits are good. His campaign says his appearance has been canceled for now. Next steps, uh, this usually means doctors tell us a couple of days in the hospital and doctors will want to monitor him for a few weeks. So expect him for now to be back on the, on the campaign trail at some point with a new issue to address, perhaps. David? Terry Moran with us tonight. Terry, thank you. Now to that extraordinary moment in a Dallas courtroom just a short time ago. The former Dallas police officer, Amber Geiger, had been found guilty of murder. She was facing 99 years in prison. She was sentenced to 10 years, eligible for parole in five. Geiger shot and killed an innocent man in his own apartment. She said she thought she had walked into her own apartment. The victim's brother, before the sentencing, testifying about the loss of his brother and then asking the judge if he could do something. He asked to give that police officer a hug. The two in an emotional embrace in front of that courtroom. Here is the moment. Everyone in the courtroom stunned. For the family of the victim, it was a moment showing the power of faith, of forgiveness, the jury then delivering their sentence. ABC's Marcus Moore leads us off from Dallas. The jury that convicted Amber Geiger of murder for killing her neighbor tonight, handing down their sentence. Ten years imprisonment in the Texas Department of Criminal Justice. The ten years, far less than the possible life behind bars the former Dallas police officer faced, relatives of both of John's family in tears. I forgive you. His brother asking the judge possible, to hug Geiger. Can I give her a hug, please? Please. And he did. Even the judge in tears. The two consoling each other. My but outside the courtroom, his mother lashing out at police. If Amber Geiger was trained not to shoot in the heart, right, right. my son would be standing here today. The jury taking less than two hours to reach their decision. This after Geiger's mother took the stand during today's sentencing hearing, asking for leniency. I mean, she wish she could have taken his place. But the former Dallas police officer faced new scrutiny after prosecutors entered into evidence, text, and social media posts some have described as racially insensitive, including one with a dog-owning friend. The owner telling Geiger the dog, quote, may be racist. It's okay, the former officer replied, I'm the same. Tonight, supporters of that former officer relieved as Geiger prepares to spend years behind bars. And Marcus Moore with us live tonight again from Dallas. That 10-year sentence was far less than what prosecutors had been asking for. Yeah, David, they wanted 28 years, at least 28 years, as that's how old both of them would have turned on Sunday. But now Amber Geiger could be up for parole after just five years. But, David, that moment in the courtroom when John's brother hugged Amber, it was a moment of strength and of grace with the entire country watching. And then after that, the judge gave Amber a Bible. David. Marcus, thank you. We're going to move on to other news here tonight. President Trump unleashing on Twitter and then in front of the cameras today after the Democrats in Congress said before the cameras themselves that they are prepared to subpoena the White House for everything it knows about President Trump's phone call with the president of Ukraine, saying they are, quote, not fooling around in their impeachment investigation. President Trump firing back in real time as he was watching, too, using an expletive. Here's ABC's chief White House correspondent, Jonathan Carl. 
Today, House Democratic leaders threatened to subpoena the White House for a trove of information related to President Trump's efforts to have Ukraine investigate his political rivals. We're not fooling around here, though. Uh, we don't uh, want this to drag on months and months and months, which appears to be the administration's strategy. Among those watching, the president himself. He fired off a furious tweet saying the Democrats should be focused on building up our country, not wasting everyone's time and energy on bull. But Democrats say if the White House doesn't hand over the information they want by the end of the week, the subpoenas will go out. Will you cooperate with those subpoenas? Well, I always cooperate. This is a hoax. This is the greatest hoax. Uh, this is a, a fraudulent crime on the American people. But we'll work together with Shifty Shift and uh, Pelosi and all of them, and we'll see what happens. The president is stepping up his attacks on the still anonymous whistleblower who brought to light the phone call with the Ukrainian president, Vladimir Zelensky, where President Trump asked Zelensky to do us a favor and investigate a debunked conspiracy theory about stolen Democratic emails and also to investigate the business dealings of Joe Biden's son, Hunter. You look at the whistleblower statement, and it's vicious, vicious. The whistleblower's description of the phone call largely matches the record of the call released by the White House. And the president was asked about the call today in a joint press conference with the president of Finland, but it was hard to get an answer. The question, sir, was what did you want President Zelensky to do about Pres Vice President Biden and his son, Hunter? Are you talking to me? Yeah, it was just a follow-up of what I just asked listen, you, sir. Listen, you ready? We have the president of Finland. Ask him a question. I have one for him. I just wanted to follow up on the one that I asked you, which did was, you hear what me? did you want did him you to... Did you hear me? Yes, ask sir. Ask him a question. I, I will, but... I've my... given you a long answer. Ask <laughs> this gentleman a question. Don't be rude. No, sir, I don't want to be rude. I just wanted you to have a chance to answer the question that I asked I've you. I've answered everything. It's a whole hoax. The president has said he wants to meet the whistleblower face to face. Kira Phillips asked Speaker Pelosi about that. The president wants to interview the whistleblower. He says it. he has the right to meet his accuser. Your response? The president probably doesn't realize how dangerous his statements are when he says he wants to expose who the whistleblower is and, and those who may have given the whistleblower that information. Later, Speaker Pelosi told George Stephanopoulos she believes the president is, quote, scared. I think the president knows the argument that can be made against him, and he's scared. George with Speaker Pelosi today. More of that interview on GMA in the morning. In the meantime, John, live at the White House tonight. And it was right here last night, John, as we came on the air, you reported the State Department's Inspector General had asked to hold an urgent briefing on Capitol Hill. That meeting happened today. What did we learn? Well, the inspector general briefed members of Congress and the staff for about an hour. According to our sources, he turned over to the committee documents that had been gathered primarily by the president's personal attorney, Rudy Giuliani. Uh, these were documents related to various conspiracy theories uh, that uh, conspiracy theories related to Ukraine and various Democrats, including Joe Biden. David. John Carl at the White House. John, thank you. Next tonight to the weather and heat records falling across the east tonight. More than 50 all-time October records tied or broken today. And take a good look at the high temperatures. You don't need me to tell you. You felt it today. D.C. hit 98, Philly 95, New York City 93 degrees. But here's the question. What is right behind it? Meteorologist Rob Marciano tracking it all for us. Hey, Rob. Hi, David. We've had some showers roll through as a precursor to the big changes coming tonight after those records. Temperatures are going to drop a good 30 degrees tomorrow. Very active radar tonight, not just here, but across into the Midwest with that slow moving cold front. The ridge in the southeast holds, unfortunately. But pulses of rain in that south, the eastern part of that front is going to sag south of Long Island tomorrow. So much cooler by a good 30 degrees from Philly to Boston with some rain. Going to be on the miserable side. Definitely big changes. The southeast ridge does not move, though. Temperatures again into the 90s. Heat indices up and over 100. Feeling like a heat wave in August rather than October. David? Beautiful sky there behind you, though, Rob. Thank you tonight. Next this evening, the new body cam video and a new perspective on that controversial arrest we have reported on here. Police officers on horseback leading an African-American suspect through the streets of Galveston. And tonight, what you can now hear the officer saying on that body cam. Here's ABC's Steve Osunsami. It's going to look really bad. Police in Galveston, Texas, who've already apologized to the man you see here being taken into custody, are now releasing police body camera video of this August 3rd arrest that many are calling shameful. More than once, you hear...